Israel is preparing for multiple attacks from Iran's proxy groups after taking out key terrorist leaders this week. Ephraim Graham has that story from the CBN newsroom. Ephraim? Gordon, in Israel and throughout the Middle East, citizens, foreign nationals, businesses and military personnel are getting ready for the possibility of a regional war and strikes against their country. As Chris Mitchell reports, Israeli leaders say they're ready for any scenario. Many expect Iran, along with its regional proxy groups, is preparing an even larger attack than when it launched more than 350 missiles, rockets, drones and UAVs into Israel on April 13th. The IDF's chief spokesman announced the military is on high alert for the possible attack that may come on multiple fronts all at once. Both in defense and in attack, IDF forces are deployed in the air, at sea, and on land, and are prepared for any scenario, and especially for the attack plans in the immediate time frame. With the prospect of an all-out war, on Thursday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with the Home Front Command. Former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Michael Oren, now back in uniform with the Israeli military, tells CBN News Israel is ready. We are prepared for every possible uh, con contingency, every possible scenario, uh, and anybody who strikes us will pay a very, very high price. How would you describe the state of readiness of the IDF right now? Very high. Very high. I'm talking to you from the north, from the northern border, and the, the level of alert here is very high. Israel is coordinating with an international coalition to face potential attacks. And following a call between Netanyahu and President Biden, the U.S. said it's committed to Israel's security from Iranian threats and announced new U.S. military deployments. Iran's Speaker of Parliament blamed both Israel and the U.S. for the killing of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran and vowed a massive retaliation at the proper time and place. The uprising Zionist regime should know that it will pay a heavy price for this cowardly night attack within the secure boundaries of the Islamic Republic. The New York Times reporting that Haniyeh was killed by a bomb planted in his apartment two months ago. And Hezbollah is issuing threats as well. Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah said Thursday Israel will weep for killing its top commander and warn that the war with Israel has entered a new phase. The enemy and those behind the enemy must wait for our inevitable reaction, God willing. There is no discussion or controversy about this. It is time to end the charade that the world is playing when it comes to Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran. They're one in the same. U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham is proposing a resolution that any escalation by Hezbollah against Israel should be viewed as an attack by Iran and says Israel should go on the offense. It is time to hit the Ayatollah in the pocketbook. His oil refineries are the lifeblood of his regime. Without those refineries, they would not be able to fund terrorism. Despite the anticipated attacks from multiple enemies, most Israelis are thrilled at the news that two Israeli athletes won medals at the Olympic Games at Paris. Many see this as a sign of Israeli resilience in the face of threats to the very existence of their country. As Israel celebrates those Olympic medals while also preparing for war, Israelis are pouring into the border town of Majdal Shams after a rocket attack killed 12 children and wounded dozens. It happened on Saturday. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl shows us how they're comforting those who are grieving in this village in northern Israel. Black flags flutter around this Druze village of about 12,000 residents situated on the Golan Heights near the Lebanese and Syrian borders. Residents are mourning. It's a hard situation for their parents. We all panicked at home here. The entire village went into a panic. It's a difficult situation. This is the soccer field where the children came to play and have fun on a Saturday afternoon. Instead, they met with a death and destruction that they didn't deserve. My grandchildren are always on the soccer field, and all the time they want me to come and watch them play soccer. But on this day, they were sick and they couldn't go, so we stayed at home. It's too bad for every child that left this world. It's too bad for all our children, Druze, Christian, Jewish, Muslim. It's too bad for all the children. 
Naim Abu Jabal's brother had a grandson on the field that day. Nine-year-old Rajwan remains hospitalized with shrapnel wounds from head to toe. His grandmother, who lives across the street, tells CBN News that everyone ran to the soccer field to help. We want them to make peace, to stop the war. It's too bad. Nobody profits. Everyone loses. No one profits from war. As the warning siren sounded, the children ran for the bomb shelter, but many didn't make it in time. The torn fence and blackened ground are now covered with pictures, trophies and soccer balls in memory of the precious lives lost. This is a tragedy, not only for Majdal Shams, it's a tragedy for the state of Israel and all the world. While Mayor Dolan Abu Saleh's extended family lost four children, he feels connected to all those killed and wounded. We are turning to all the world. We are saying that if our children that we lost, if that can be a message for peace, and here in this very difficult incident, in this desolate incident, this massacre can stop, and everyone will have security, we will accept it. We already want peace and security in the whole area of the north, in all of the state of Israel, in all the world. In nearby communities, memorials and business closures reflect their solidarity. Thousands of Jewish, Christian and Muslim Israelis are coming here to show their support. A second memorial in Majd al-Shams attests to the close family atmosphere. IDF Lieutenant Colonel Gidon Harari, who is Jewish, lives 20 minutes away and regularly visits the town. He says it's a main hub in the region, whether or not you're Druze. We have friends here. Actually, the Druze for us, especially for people like me that we served the, for 25 years in the IDF, they are brothers, brothers in arms and proud uh, citizens of uh, the state of Israel. Retired IDF Colonel Hamara Ganam says following the attack and despite the danger, the Druze community has no intention of leaving. Not just the residents on the Golan Heights. The Druze communities didn't leave and won't leave despite the danger that exists because it's their culture not to leave their communities. Abu Saleh says this is a strong united community and while they have received help from the government, they will take a long time to heal. We feel that despite our strength, despite our organization, this is an event that won't end in a month. But it will take a long time for us to recover from this terrible tragedy. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Majd al Shams. Our prayers go out to that community and, and also our support. How, how can we help them in their time of need? But we need moral clarity here to recognize that this is a struggle against evil. There is a death cult on the other side of that rocket that doesn't mind killing innocents, doesn't mind killing children. And when you look at Hezbollah, when you look at Hamas, you look at the ties back to Iran, uh, it all comes down to a single ideology. And in that ideology, we uh, uh, in the West need to stand up and say, no, not on our watch. It's been reported, uh, it's part of the presidential campaign today, that somehow or other this isn't a binary situation and that uh, there, it's obviously very complicated and all those things. And uh, I just stand against that. It's not a binary. Uh, look at the uh, charter of Hamas from 1988, specifically tying it back to Islamic ideology coming out of Iran. So if, if you're a woman, take a look at Article 18 of the Charter of Hamas from 1988. Under that charter, you are obligated to just be a homemaker and a child rearer. That's put in writing by this group. And, and you're going to say that somehow or other that's okay? When you look at what they do in Iran to women, where they, if you don't wear your scarf right, you're beaten to death? Uh, how can you possibly say that it, it's okay to support them or that somehow or other you can come to peace with them? And if you're Jewish, that same charter says that you need to be killed, no matter where you are in the world. Now they've, you know, people will say, well, they amended it and, and they don't have that claim anymore. They're just going against, quote, Zionists, close quote. But let's, let's read behind this. This is a, a death cult. They are calling for the eradication of Jews. They are calling for the eradication of Israel. 
They're saying it's for religious reasons that Palestine is sacred ground and must be recaptured. We have to stand against that. This isn't something where there's any need for you know, muddying the facts. It's crystal clear what's going on. And the United States needs to stand strongly with Israel. And we as Christians need to have our voice heard in the public square. Don't equivocate. This isn't something you, you, you can possibly do. They have vowed to repeat October 7 again and again and again until Israel is wiped off the planet. Let's believe them and let's stand against it.